world underneath the one we live in, humans are no longer humans, and animals are no longer the ones we know about. The world is transforming into a hub for technology rather than nature, and humans will no longer need to rely on the limitations that they were born with. Is that a good or a bad thing? From the mysteries behind biotechnology, organ farms, artificial wombs, we are incessantly trying to find solutions to upgrade the world around us. Whether that is harmful to our environment or not, the benefits seem to be on our side in the short term, potentially blinding us from the harm coming towards us in the long term. Join us to see the little intricacies of this hidden world and how it will affect us and our future generations. The Mysterious Coupling of Biology and Technology Bioprinting Who hasn't yet tried to 3D print a little miniature tower or an everyday cup? My suggestion, it's a must try and so very incredible. Now, that's not all 3D printing can do. Actually, people have been attempting to build real towers and homes with 3D printers, and that is just wow. But there is always at least one person who takes these a little too far and suggest to 3D print humans. Yes, that's right, you heard me well. And it is about to get a little eerie. So I suggest you don't stay in the dark while watching this video and be well surrounded. That technique is what we call bioprinting, a process very close to the idea of 3D printing, but instead of using plastics or metal, they make use of cells and biomaterials to create structures that function almost like living organs making the cells multiply and divide. Bioprinting comes in steps. Let's discover how they do this together. First, we have pre-bioprinting. Think of it like preparing a recipe for the printer to follow. Scientists use complex scans like CT and MRI to make sure they have all the right ingredients. They mix cells with a special ink and use a special camera system to make sure they have enough cells to successfully print a tissue model. Next up is bioprinting. This is where the real magic happens. Scientists take the cell-filled ink and put it into a cartridge. They then choose the right tools, kind of like picking different paintbrushes for different art projects. The scientists have to use different cells, inks, and equipment depending on what kind of tissue they're trying to build. It's like building a miniature work of art, but with living cells. Lastly, we have post-bioprinting. This is when the printed structures get their finishing touches. Just like letting a cake cool or a painting dry, the structures need to become stable. This is done by either soaking them in a special solution or zapping them with UV light. The scientists decide which method to use based on what the structures are made of. Then the structures get cozy in an incubator to grow and develop. It's like giving them a warm and cozy place to hang out while they become real tissues. This can be really useful for modern-day medicine and treatments. Your eye isn't functioning as it used to? Say no more. Did your hair stop growing evenly on your head? Well, scientists have the biological solution without you having to call 70 hair transplanters. Biotechnology will open new doors for more effective wound healing after life-changing surgeries. And much further than that, whatever your imagination can take you. Organ Farms this bioprinting technique cannot just be done anywhere. It needs a very specific and unique environment where it will be more effective. Those environments are what we call microgravity environments, and like its name suggests, it's where gravity is very low. I'm sure you're asking why, and here's the explanation. Developing the vascular networks needed for organ function can be a tough task. Most bio-inks or hydrogels are runny at room temperature, but become solid when warmed to body temperature. This means that bioprinted structures need support to prevent them from collapsing. However, using scaffolds to provide support can harm the vascular networks. To avoid these issues, scientists are exploring bioprinting in a gravity-free environment. By doing so, they hope to grow organs without the need for scaffolds. This could be the key to developing fully functional bioprinted organs. NASA actually tested this theory in May of 2019 by sending a biofabrication facility to the International Space Station. Their goal is to find a solution to the shortage of organs, 
which leads to an average of 20 people in the US dying each day while waiting for transplants. Why wait when you can create? The team started by completing test protocols and hopes to begin printing whole organs by 2025. It may take an additional 10 years to bring these organs to clinical use. Despite the high cost of rocket missions, the price of NASA organs is expected to be lower than what patients currently pay for treating chronic diseases. So when you look up to the International Space Station just flying above you, now you know that other than it carrying humans to explore the Earth and beyond, it also carries potential human organs. Imagine new bionic eyeballs that could see in all wavelengths then zoom in however much they need. Would you want to have one of those? I personally think that as cool as that could be, it could be overwhelming for human everyday life. Sometimes not having everything is more than enough for our mental peace. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Let's debate. Artificial wombs. Babies without sperm or eggs? How? Well, like I said before, don't let the limits of your imagination trick you into thinking that we cannot achieve the impossible. In recent years, researchers have made groundbreaking advancements in the field of reproductive science, challenging the traditional notion of conception. With revolutionary technologies and innovative techniques, scientists are exploring alternative methods to create babies without the need for traditional sperm and eggs. One such method is known as IVG. IVG involves the creation of gametes, or reproductive cells from ordinary skin or blood cells. Through a series of laboratory manipulations, these cells are reprogrammed into either sperm or egg cells. The process begins by obtaining a small sample of the individual cells, typically skin or blood cells. Then researchers utilized induced pluripotent stem cells to reprogram these cells back to their embryonic state. This allows them to be transformed into any other cell type, including germ cells responsible for producing sperm or eggs. The reprogrammed cells are then exposed to a carefully orchestrated series of chemical signals, nurturing their development into fully functional gametes. Scientists monitor this process closely, ensuring the cells undergo the necessary stages of maturation to become viable reproductive cells. Once the gametes are successfully developed, they can be used for fertilization. In the case of a sperm cell creation through biotechnology, these artificial gametes can be used to fertilize an egg through in vitro fertilization IVF. Similarly, artificial eggs can be fertilized with conventional sperm. The possibilities enabled by IVG are not limited to reproduction without traditional gametes. It also offers promising avenues for same-sex couples and individuals who may be unable to produce viable eggs or sperm. For example, two men could have their skin cells reprogrammed into eggs, allowing them to have biological offspring together. Likewise, two women could have their cells transformed into sperm, enabling them to conceive through IVF. While it obviously holds immense potential, there are numerous ethical considerations that accompany this groundbreaking technology. Questions surrounding the implications of altering human reproduction and the potential risks associated with manipulating cells must be carefully addressed and researched. However, as science continues to push the boundaries of what was once deemed impossible, the prospect of babies without conventional sperm or egg shines a light on a future where reproductive options are no longer limited and genes no longer predestined. The Environment The environment can both thank us and curse us for these developments. That is up to how we use the development of technology in our favor taking into account the environment that surrounds us. Living near the sea might become risky due to increasing global temperatures. This is causing harm to places like the Great Barrier Reef in Australia, but there is a potential solution. Scientists are using synthetic biology to make coral stronger and better able to handle warmer water. We wanted to know what people think about genetically engineered coral, so we asked over a thousand Australians. Turns out more people support the idea than oppose it. But many are still unsure and want to make sure we're doing the right thing. They also want to know more about the potential consequences and think we should be careful when using this technology. Overall, people are hopeful that this could save the reef and bring some benefits, but they want more testing and rules in place before diving in. What would you think about this solution? 
Is it more or less harmful than it is beneficial? But it goes beyond that. As scientists who hack the functions of nature are exploring ways to even make animals into their own interest-based functionalities, drones in the form of birds, new tools for espionage and world occupation, will the new developed animals be able to co-live with the natural ones or will war arise between them too? Time will tell. New species? Humans have many limitations, and this appears to bother a few. The solution? I'm sure you guessed it, right? Biotechnology. Bioluminescence is a great way to naturally produce non-harmful light, and biohackers are on their way, if not already, to make themselves glow in the dark and produce light. They have also found ways to make non-decaying foods, free from all allergens and diseases. So humans are basically turning themselves into super-powered robots. Cryosleep, mind-blowing brain upgrades, and even merging with AI. It's like we're creating a whole new species. But hold up, there's a catch. We might lose our humanity in the process. Yeah, becoming soulless machines is a legit concern. The line between human and robot is getting blurrier, and it's anyone's guess where this will take us. And hey, what about fairness? Will only the rich folks get all these cool upgrades? We can't have a bigger gap between the haves and have-nots, right? We need rules and regulations to keep it all in check. The future is both incredible and terrifying. We can do amazing things with biotech, solving all sorts of problems. But man, we could also mess things up big time and lose what makes us human. So it's up to us to be smart about this. Let's talk it out, figure out the right way forward. We can't let the human era turn into a nightmare. We've got to find that sweet spot where progress meets ethics. It's doable, but we've got to work for it. And there you have it, folks. The scary end of the human era. I hope you enjoyed this wild ride through the world of biotechnology and its potential consequences. Remember, while the future may be incredible, it's up to us to be smart and ethical about it. Let's not lose our humanity in the pursuit of progress. Until next time, stay human and keep laughing. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video, where we'll explore more fascinating developments of our world. Don't forget to like, subscribe to our channel to stay tuned with our latest videos and most exciting subjects. See you soon.